In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sixteen eighteen, just a few days after the reformation of the order, the discalced Carmelites entered India and built a monastery in Old Goa known to be a novitiate house. It is on the ruins of this very monastery that we have gathered here today to celebrate. This monastery also housed two great martyrs of our Carmelite order. Blessed Dennis of the Nativity, a priest whose secular name was Pierre Bertelot, born in France, a cartographer and a naval commander by profession, but in 1635 became a discalced Carmelite at Goa. It was also here at Goa that Thomas Rodriguez da Cunha, born in Portugal, in 1598 had been professed as a lay brother under the name Blessed Redemptus of the Cross in 1615. Both of them were together sent from this monastery to Sumatra, where they were martyred on the 29th of November 1638 for their faith as they refused to renounce their religion and convert. Due to the solemn exposition of the relics of St. Francis Xavier, the feast originally celebrated on the 29th November has been anticipated to today. May these heroic martyrs be an inspiration for each of us, strengthen our faith in Christ, and give us the courage to work towards our faith. Dear brothers and sisters, as we have come here to honor the two Carmelite martyrs, Blessed Dionysius and Redemptus, we celebrate our own faith. And this is an occasion for us also to renew, to strengthen our own faith, and if need be, courageously give witness to it by our life and actions. For the times that we have failed to be witnesses of Jesus Christ, for the times that we have failed to proclaim our faith, let us be sorry and ask God's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Carmelites serving in, in Goa, our four communities of friars, our cloistered nuns, and our three secular Carmelite communities, two in Margao and one in Mapsa. Today, one of our secular Carmelites, Sonia, is celebrating a birthday, so we remember especially during this Eucharist, and we also pray for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Father, we celebrate the memory of blessed Dennis and Redemptus, who died for their faithful witnessing to Christ. Give us the strength to follow their example, loyal and faithful to the end. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, by faith we are judged, righteous and at peace with God, since it is by faith and through Jesus that we have entered this state of grace in which we can boast about looking forward to God's glory. But that is not all we can boast about. We can boast about our sufferings. These sufferings bring patience, as we know, and patience brings perseverance, and perseverance brings hope. And this hope is not deceptive, because the love of God has been poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which has been given us. This is the word of the Lord. Our response will be some. had not been on our side, 
when men rose against us, then would they have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled? Our response. waters have engulfed us, the torrent gone over us, over our head would have swept the raging waters. Our response? The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our response. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you most solemnly, unless a wheat grain falls on the ground and dies, it remains only a single grain. But if it dies, it yields a rich harvest. Anyone who loves his life loses it. Anyone who hates his life in this world will keep it for the eternal life. If a man serves me, he must follow me wherever I am. My servant will be there too. If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ.
Dear brothers and sisters, we have gathered here today to keep the memorial of our two blessed Carmelites, Dionysius and Redemptus, who were martyred on 29th of November, 1638. They are the proto-martyrs of the Discalced Carmelite Order, first martyrs of our Discalced Carmelite Order. And they were beatified by Pope Leo XIII in 1900. Veneration of the saints in the church began with the martyrs, cult of the martyrs. If you go to Rome, you have what is known as the catac catacombs. These are large underground bunkers, of course not small places, kilometers and kilometers, where all the early Christians, most of them martyrs, were buried. And then the Christians gathered at the tombs of these martyrs to celebrate the Eucharist. Of course, keeping the memory of these martyrs, but also out of fear of the persecution because Christians were hounded in the early Christian centuries. The first three Christian centuries were a period of martyrdom. Emperor after emperor, beginning with Emperor Nero, tried to stifle the Christian faith with prohibitions, extreme torture, and monstrous methods of execution like throwing to the wild beasts. But nothing could stop Christianity from spreading. Actually, the Roman governors reported that the condemned Christians seemed almost elated, happy at the prospect of giving their lives for Christ. And we have a testimony of this also in the Acts of the Apostles. The more the Christian church, the early church was persecuted, the more the church grew in numbers. One of the fathers of the church, the early saints of the uh, Catholic Church, Tertullian said, the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christianity. Wherever martyrs shed their blood, Christianity grew. The church became all the more stronger. Now towards the end of the persecution, we know uh, the persecution ended in 315 with the Edict of Milan by Emperor Constantine who got converted and became a Christian himself. In 325, we have the first ecumenical council of the church. An ecumenical council is an important meeting or gathering of all the bishops. There were 318 bishops. It was held at a place called Nicaea. Now it is modern day Turkey. So 318 bishops attended this first council from which we have the creed, which is known as the Nicene Creed, not the shorter one, the longer one, God from God, light from God, a light from light. That longer creed was adopted at this council. That is why it is known as the Nicene Creed. And what was special about this council? Most of the bishops who attended, I said there were 318 in number, most of them, or many of them, had lost either an eye or a hand or were limping. As they had just come out of an extremely challenging time of persecution. I said the first three centuries were, uh, were, were centuries of persecution. So much so that a historian, Theodoret, says about the council. The council looked like an assembled army of martyrs. So all, most of these uh, bishops who were attending the Council of Nicaea had undergone persecution and even physical suffering. Carmelites and martyrdom. Beginning with St. Teresa. St. Teresa is a young girl wanted to die as a martyr. She had heard that Christians were being martyred in Turkey, land of the Moors, it was known uh, at that time. So she escaped. She knew she would not get permission from her parents. So she and her brother Rodrigo escaped. But on the way, they were met by the uncle. So the uncle met them and brought them, convinced them to come back home. But at a young age, St. Teresa had this desire of dying a martyr. We go to the 18th century. This was the time of the French Revolution. And we have a group of 16 nuns, French nuns, Carmelite nuns, discalced Carmelite nuns, they are known as the martyrs of Compiègne. 
So they were sentenced to death. You know, uh, French Revolution was anti-Christian, anti-church. When they were at the foot of the scaffold, they renewed their vows. There were 11 discalced Carmelite nuns, three lay sisters and two extern sisters, altogether 16 of them. At the foot of the scaffold, they renewed their vows and they sang, sang the Veni Creator Spiritus, proper to the occasion. Whenever we renew vows, we invoke the, uh, the blessings of the Holy Spirit. And even as they went one by one, they were, they were put to death one by one, beginning with the novice, and the prioress was the last to be put to death. We are told that they sang hymns. They sang the Salve Regina. They were full of joy that they were giving their lives for Christ. Sometimes they sang the Laudate Dominum. So another example of Carmelite martyrs. Another, we go forward. This is in the 19th century. We have Titus Brandsma. He's not an OCD, he's an Ocam. Uh, from Holland, a Dutch Carmelite priest who opposed the Nazis and spoke against it many times. He was imprisoned in the concentration camp of Dachau. That is the first concentration camp. It is located in Germany and the longest running one. He was canonized recently in 2022 and uh, he is known as the patron saint of journalists. So another uh, martyr, Carmelite martyr. More or less at the same time, we have another discalced Carmelite nun, Edith Stein. You're, fav you're familiar with her, Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. She also died in the gas chambers on the 9th of August, 1942. When they were captured, of course, uh, uh, that, uh, the sisters tried to protect her. She was in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Germany, so they sent her to Holland, thinking that the Nazis would not reach Holland, but the Nazis reached there too. And she and her sister Rosa both were arrested and were take, taken to the concentration camp in Poland, today modern day Poland, but that time it was under the occupation of the Nazis. Teresa was quite courageous, but her sister was terrified because she had heard stories of what happened in the gas chambers. Her name was Rosa and she comforted Rosa. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross also has a meaning. Her name, her, her religious name was Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, Akruce. Benedicta means blessed. Teresa, blessed by the cross. She was not afraid of embracing the cross. And when they were uh, taken, captured and taken to, uh, to the gas chambers, she said to her sister, let us go and die for our people. Of course, she did not die so much for her Christian faith, but because she was of Jewish descent. Uh, the Nazis were trying to eliminate all the Jews. We have Saint Therese of the child Jesus. She did not die a martyr, but she desired to be a, a, a martyr. At one point in her autobiography, she says, I have these desires to be a fighter, to be a priest, to be an apostle, to be a doctor, to be a martyr. As if I could not be satisfied with one. Uh, for your sake, every kind of heroic action at once, she says. I want to become everything. I want to become a priest. I want to become a missionary. I want to become a doctor. I want to become a martyr. We can say she became a martyr of love, not shedding her blood. And then we come to the two blesseds that we are uh, commemorating today. Blessed Dionysius and Redemptus. As you have heard, they had an illustrious career before joining the Carmelite order. Blessed Dionysius was a cartographer. He drew maps and one of his maps is preserved till today in the National British Museum in London. And uh, uh, Redemptus was a Portuguese soldier. So they had an illustrious career, renounced everything, came here, were ready go to go to Sumatra, that is in Indonesia, and they died martyrs. We are not sure where exactly where they were put to death. We don't have their tombs. But what is the fruit of their martyrdom? In the gospel today, we, we heard, unless a grain of wheat dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, then it produce, produces uh, um, uh, abundant fruit. Today, Indonesia is a flourishing Carmelite mission. We can say it is because of the blood of these two martyrs. It is a growing Carmelite province. They have about 60 priests. It's not a province as yet. Uh, 54 seminarians. And why it is surprising? Because Indonesia till today is a Muslim country. But Christian vocations and Carmelite vocations are flourishing. 
So we thank God for the blood of these two martyrs uh, due to whom we have a flourishing mission of the Carmelites in Indonesia. Till today, Christians are persecuted. His, uh, according to latest statistics, it is the most persecuted religion in the world. Christians are persecuted in around 133 countries, including India, in different measures. In some places, it is widespread persecution. In some countries, it may not be widespread persecution. But Christians are persecuted in many countries, and not only in Muslim countries, even in Christian countries. Because uh, now practicing the faith, standing for the values of the gospel is becoming more and more difficult. So persecution, martyrdom is practically at our doorstep. And we know the, the rise of, of, uh, of right-wing parties in India too. So we are not sure what will happen in our country. We must be prepared if it is our turn to give witness to the Lord even by our blood. A few years ago, Pope Francis released a, a, a document, an apostolic exhortation, Gaudete et exultate, rejoice and be glad. These are the words he has taken from the Beatitudes. We have these Beatitudes in chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew. And after two Beatitudes on persecution, at the end, there are two actually, not one, but two Beatitudes on persecution. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteous sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. First beatitude. Second one. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter uh, all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. And after these two beatitudes on persecution, Jesus says, don't be afraid. Don't be sad. Rejoice and be extremely glad. Rejoice that you have been chosen uh, to, to give witness for my name. There are many teachings of Jesus on persecution. Jesus did not deceive us. When he told us that we should follow him, he also told us that we should be ready for persecution. In the Gospel of John, Jesus will say, servants are not greater than their master. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you too. But then in the Gospel of Luke, he says, Before all this occurs, they will arrest you. He's speaking about the end times. They will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons. They will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. Don't be afraid and don't prepare what you will have to say. I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. So Jesus says, when you're persecuted, don't be afraid because I am with you. And don't prepare, don't be nervous of what you have to say. When the time comes, I will inspire you. I will give you the right words. In the first reading, uh, that is St. Paul's letter to the, to the uh, Romans, he says, I will boast of my sufferings. He was never afraid of giving a list of what he had to suffer. But he says it is nothing compared to the glories, the joys of heaven. Will we get an opportunity to die as martyrs, shedding our blood? Perhaps no. If it comes our way, then we should be ready even for that. That is known as red martyrdom. That is the classical sense of martyrdom. That's, there's another, another form of martyrdom, which is known as white martyrdom, without shedding blood. And St. Teresa describes this in the way of perfection. She's, of course, uh, speaking to her own sisters, the nuns in the convent, but it can be applied to us as Christians. For don't you know yet, sisters, that the life of a good religious who desires to be one of God's close friends is a long martyrdom? That means living the religious life faithfully is martyrdom. It is going what you would like to do as an individual, your natural instincts. Even as Christians, Jesus has said, if you want to be my disciple, take up your cross and follow me. So following Jesus faithfully implies a lot of sufferings. It may not Im involve shedding of the blood, but it is difficult. It is sacrificial. A long martyrdom, she says, because this classical martyrdom, when you have to shed your blood, the suffering may last a few minutes or hours at the most. And once uh, uh, you are killed, your suffering ends. But living faithfully your Christian life, your, of your religious life, living faithfully your religious life is a long martyrdom. 
a long martyrdom, says St. Teresa, because in comparison with the martyrdom of those who are quickly beheaded, it can be very long. So I think all of us may not get an opportunity of red martyrdom, but all of us are called to white martyrdom, living faithfully the Christian vocation that God has given us. So today, as we celebrate the memorial of these two great martyrs, proto-martyrs of the Discalced Carmelite Orders, let us ask the Lord to strengthen our, our, our own faith. And if there is an occasion to testify it with our own lives, with our, with our, with our actions, and be prepared also for the long white martyrdom whenever we, we decide to live our Christian lives faithfully according to the teachings of Christ. Let us all stand with trust and confidence. Now we place our intentions before the Lord. The response will be sung. Hear us, O Lord, as we call out your name, and we ask you to be with us, O Lord, in our needs. Bless us, Lord. We pray for the Pope, bishops, priests, nuns, and religious. On this day, we also pray for our provincial, who is on his pastoral visit, that as leaders in the church, they may remind us of our call to holiness and of union and communion with God, who is our goal. Our response. Yes, O Lord, as we call out your name, and we ask you to be with us, O Lord, in our knees, bless us, Lord. For all the governments and world leaders, that they may respect the laws of God and protect human life, as well as work towards the sustenance of the environment and take decisions for the good of the people. Our response. Yes, O Lord, as we call out your name, and we ask you to be with us, O Lord, in our knees, bless us, Lord. For all the members of our Carmelite order, clerical, non-clerical, and secular, that they may never take the easy way and thus abandon the right way that they may grow in love and grace, thus strengthening their vocation to the Garden of Carmel. Our response. Hear us, O Lord, as we call out your name, and we ask you to be with us, O Lord, in our knees. Bless us, Lord. We pray also for all those who have helped us for this Mass today, and for all our benefactors and well-wishers at large, especially for Mr. Glenn, for his selfless service and dedication towards the Carmelites. Our response. Yes, O Lord, as we call out your name, and we ask you to be with us, O Lord, in our knees, bless us, Lord. For all the faithful departed, anyone who comes to you is never turned away, O Lord. Admit to your Father's house all those who have gone before us in your faith and hope. Our response. 
Hear us, O Lord, as we call out your name, and we ask you to be with us, O Lord, in our needs. Bless us, Lord. For all of us present at this Eucharistic celebration, Lord Jesus, you who are present among those gathered in your name, hear your church united in prayer. Our response. Hear us, O Lord, as we call out your name, and we ask you to be with us, O Lord, in our needs. Bless us, Lord. God, our loving Father, we thank you for all the blessings you have showered on us. We thank you for all the saints in Carmel who continue inspiring us through their life and through their writings. We thank you for the gift of uh, blessed Dionysius and Redemptus, especially for sending them here and for their missionary work in Indonesia. On this occasion, we ask you to bless each one of us gathered here so that like them, we might also be courageous enough to give witness to the gospel. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Lord, at this celebration of the Eucharist, we honor the suffering and death of your martyrs, blessed Dennis and Redemptus. In offering this sacrifice, may we proclaim the death of your son, who gave these martyrs courage, not only by his words, but also by the example of his own passion. For he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Bring them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give order to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours, through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth, sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end, we acclaim.
of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Philip Neri, Cardinal our Bishop, Simeon Fernandez, Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all us, we pray. With blessed Joseph, us, her spouse, with, ble with the blessed, blessed Mary, Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, us, her spouse, and the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be first, to it in life, praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As one family, let us call upon God, our loving Father, in the very words Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. 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 Yeah. 
Let us pray. Lord, may we who eat at your holy table be inspired by the example of blessed Dennis and Redemptus. May we keep before us the loving sacrifice of your Son and come to the unending peace of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, let us give a big applause to our Lord Jesus. He has brought us together here in this holy place. Though they are not here, these holy men and women, they lived here, their spirit is here. They united us in communion. We say we can come with the saints, we are here together. Thank God for this beautiful opportunity granted us once a year to come and celebrate the feast of these great martyrs, St. Dennis and Redemptus. We have anticipated this feast because you know for the past years and also this year being the year of exposition of the relics of St. Francis Xavier, which begins on November 21st. It will not be possible for us with all the traffic arrangements and the roads will be blocked. So we decided to anticipate and to have it today on November 6th. I would like to thank our Father Provincial. Since we knew he was coming for the pastor visitation, we tried to keep it so that he could also participate, celebrate this Eucharist. So on behalf of all of us gathered here, I would like to thank in a very special way, our Provincial Superior, where Reverend Father Sylvester de Souza for having willingly agreed to come to celebrate and to break this word, beautiful way he explained to us the life of the martyrs, how martyrdom began in the church. A good reminder for all of us to know that this is what the church grows because of the blood of the martyrs. Thank you, Father Provincial, for your presence and coming and joining us. It was for me a great surprise to see the parish priest of the cathedral last year. We are very happy to have him here, and he was with us last year. And today, suddenly, I saw him here also today. I just sent a message to him, I know these days are busy days for him and for the Basilica, preparing with all the meetings, the arrangements. But he was really shows his love, shows his love for the Carmelites. And you know, he was an ex-Carmelite, but still the spirit of Carmel is in him. So we thank him for coming here. His presence is our joy. So thank you, Father Rosario Oliveira, for your presence here at the coming. We have our Canadian delegation priest, Father Canio Cardozo. He's here and he's living a few days to go, but still he made it come here and join in the celebration. We thank him very much, Father Canio Cardozo. Father Victor wanted to join us, but he realized his ticket was tomorrow night is going to the airport. So he came and said, sorry, Father, I can't come. So we thank him also, his desire to come and join us. Thank all the fathers gathered here. 
Oh, thank special way. You know, there's a there's a man behind here, which keeps this place always alert, attentive, sing to everything here. We see today there's electricity. We had no power supply. There's no generator here today. There's electricity. There's a person behind you in old Goa, a generous man, a man who's ready to help. When I told him there's a mass on six, he began employing people here to clean this place. And when we came, we got we came to just to clear some things up. He was there again here. He is none other than Mr. Glenn Gabral. We thank him very much. He's here. And you know, he doesn't take any money, nothing. He doesn't allow us to pay him. And so we thought of at least offering some small gift. I request for the provincial to offer this gift to him on behalf of the Carmelites. Come forward, Mr. Glenn Capron. He has told me that there are people who have helped to install this power supply electricity here. Lighting with Sarpanch, Meda, Parvatkar. The, all the Sarpanch of this place. The meter box, cleaning of the road and the bushes. The Panchayat again and Sarikar Naik. We have taken special interest. We thank them very much. We have the press. Aldona Matters, Joseph is here, Govan reporter, alert Govan. We thank you very much for your presence. We thank Marshall, who is here, you know, he's staying in that house down. He comes time and again to see this place, how it is going on, to see anybody, and then he gives us messages. We thank him, he's a historian, and so he's still, he's doing his doctorate. And he also helps us in preparing the history of our own Carmelites. We thank you, Marshall, very much. We thank Fatima Viegas from Dona Paula. She has sponsored the chairs. Yeah. We thank the choir, our postulants and the OCDS members. We thank the Rochelle and Cloyd who have brought us next. They're going to feed us after this. So we thank them for coming, of willingly to offer this special snacks for us. Thank all of you gathered here and all those who want to be come to help us here. Your presence is our joy. Without you, there will be no joy. So come in the Legion of Mary, the OCS members, and some people who have come, taken time to come to be with us. And also we thank our sisters, the external sisters of Kulchikali Kamal, they're here. Thank you for coming. So thank you all the sound system, we have come here, so part of the Mapsa community, Emmaus community, and Margao is here. And all of you, I've not missed anybody, I hope so. Thank you very much. God bless you all. I would like to also especially thank Father Marlin because he's the coordinator, uh, the organizer, the superior of Margao usually takes the initiative of organizing this mass, so it's not easy because nobody lives here. So to clean the place, and of course, many people have helped, but he has taken the leadership. So thank you, dear Father Marlin, too. Uh, Mr. Glenn is not only helpful to us, but he's fighting many good causes in, in Goa. You must have seen his pictures in the YouTube, no, on the uh, TV. Recently, he had gone also to Delhi. So uh, on behalf of all of you gathered here, I promise him we might not be there at the protest site, but we are all there with you and we are praying so that our Goa may be saved and what is good may be done in Goa, especially by our, by our political leaders. We, we will be keeping this intention in our prayers. Thank you for your presence and lively participation in the Eucharist. Happy feast to you all. Let us stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.